back for the last section in chapter five. We're going to be talking about operations with complex numbers. Remember, that's where we have a real and imaginary part. And we're going to talk about a complex plane. Uh, it's kind of like the xy axis, except what we're going to do is we're going to put the real axis as the horizontal. So that first number will tell you where you go left or right. And then the second number with the i will tell you whether you go up or down. Okay, so that's how we're going to plot those. So as you can see, we kind of plot these points that we have here. Uh, if we go 2, negative 3, well, that means we go right 2, and then we go down 3, and there we are at the point right there. All right, negative 1 plus 4i, that means we'd go left 1, and then we'd go up 4, there we are right there. 4 plus i, well, that means we're going to go right 4, and then up 1, there we are. And then negative i, well, we, that means uh, there's no real part, so we're going to go 0, and now we're not going to go left or right, we're just going to go down 1. And we're going to be right there. So we should be able to plot those. It's just like plotting x, y coordinates. Remember, the real part is the horizontal. And the imaginary part with the eye is the vertical. So that'll tell you whether you go up or down. All right. Now with that, um, when we plot those points like we did, is that if we want to find the distance, the absolute value of it, we basically want to find out what's the shortest way back to the origin. So if you plot like a, th like a point like 3 plus 4i, you go right 3 and up 4. Well, if we just draw a line straight back, we make a right triangle, and then we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find that, that hypotenuse, that distance. And so we just have to take 3 squared plus 4 squared and then take the square root. So think Pythagorean theorem when you think absolute value here. All right, let's try a couple of these here. All right, so uh, remember, uh, oh, oopsie, it's not working there. Okay, there we are. All right, so what we're going to do is if it's the absolute value of a plus bi, remember, it's just going to be the square root of a plus a squared plus b squared. So in this case, to find the absolute value, well, 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25. Well, the absolute value there is the square root of 34. Huh. All right, so in this case, we, we just have a real part with no imaginary part. Well, we just know that the absolute value of negative 13 is, well, 13, because really that would just make us go left 13. So we're 13 away from zero, yeah. Um, this one here, uh, the absolute value of negative 7i, well, if you want to technically think about it, there's, there's no real part, so zero squared plus. Now remember, it's a negative number, but anytime we square something, Remember, put it in parentheses, we know it's going to be positive, so it's going to be the square root of 49, which we know is 7. There we go, and that's how we do those values. Okay, pretty easy. Just think Pythagorean theorem, absolute value. Pythagorean theorem is really what we're doing there. All right, now we can add and subtract complex numbers. All we have to do is make sure to add the real parts, or negative 6, that would be negative 2. And then we add the imaginary parts, and that kind of helps me when I do this, so I don't forget, 2i and negative 7i is going to be negative 5i. Okay, so again, just make sure to combine the real parts and then combine the imaginary parts. Not too bad. Now, subtraction, I'm going to show you a little trick of the trade. Over the many, many years I've been teaching for you know, over a quarter of a century here, I found that the easiest way when we do subtraction is to turn it into an addition problem. So in other words, what I would do is just rewrite this, whoopsie, no, I'm not sure why that's not working there, 5, there we go, 5 minus 2i, and what I would do then is I would distribute that negative and make that a positive 2 and make that a positive 3i. I found over the years you see a lot less mistakes if you'll do it that way. And then we can just combine our 5 and 2 to get 7. Negative 2 and positive 3i would give us just 1i, is what we'd have there. All right, just a word to the wise. Like I said, seems to seems to work when you do it that way. All right, now one thing that we can figure out is that uh, i squared is actually equal to negative 1. Let me go back to that. We know that um, the square root... Uh, the square root of negative 1 is i. So if I were to square the i, well, if I square this side, well, that just means that's got to be negative 1. Squaring a square root just gets rid of the square root. So anytime we see an i squared, we want to replace it with negative 1. All right, remember that. It's kind of a key term there. So let's multiply. All right, so we're going to distribute that. So negative 2i times 2 is negative 4i. And then negative times negative is positive. 2 times 4 is 8. And then i times i is i squared. 
Now, again, this is not totally simplified because we know that I squared is negative 1. So if I multiply that by 8, that gives me negative 8 minus 4i. Again, we always like to write the imaginary part, or the imaginary part second, the real part first. So again, remember that form. That's what we want to see. Now, what you might see in a multiple choice question is you might see this as one of the answer choices. And it, it's partially right, but it's not simplified. So it's not your final answer. Make sure you write it correctly. All right. Ooh, now this is one. Again, we have to FOIL this. Okay, double distribute, as we sometimes say. We'd have 12, and then we'd have a minus 3i, and then we'd have a positive 24i, and then we'd have a negative 6i squared. Okay, now remember, the real part 12, this turns into, because i squared is negative 1, this part turns into positive 6, so the real part is 18. Sorry, I want to make that. Don't want to look that high. And then the imaginary parts, well, we'd add the negative 3 and positive 24. That'd be a positive 21i. That's what we'd see there. Okay, so always simplify. i squared is the same thing as negative 1. All right. Now, this is kind of a nice one. I like this one. We have plus and minuses inside that are the same things because what happens here is we get a 4. Now, we're going to get negative 18i and positive 18i. So those get rid of each other. And then I just have negative 81, 81i squared. Now that turns into positive 81 plus 4 is 85, is what we see there. Nice. Hey, that works out nice. I like those. All right, there we go. In this case, yeah, if we had this one here multiplying, we'd have negative 30i squared, but the i squared is negative 1, so actually it turns it into positive 30 would be our final answer there. All right, <coughs> excuse me now. You can see that we have some different powers of i that we can work with, and there's a kind of a four cycle pattern. i to the first is i, i squared is negative one, i to the third is negative i, and i to the fourth is one. Well, that pattern will repeat itself every time. So i to the fifth is i, so it's just like that one. i to the sixth is negative one, and that pattern goes on and on and on and repeats. So as we kind of look here, what would be negative six i to the 14th? All right, well, negative 6 is what we have there. i to the 14th, now remember, it repeats itself every 4. So i to the 4th is the same thing as i to the 8th, which is the same thing as i to the 12th. That gets us through, and then we'd have 2 more. So i to the 14th would actually be uh, negative 1. So we put that in there, and our answer would just be 6. All right. There we go. Now again, this, uh, oops, let's go back here and put that on there. Now again, keep that in mind as we go through this pattern. Okay, you kind of see how that goes. So I usually kind of do powers of four to get back to where we started all over again. Um, again, you can use that as the cycles there. Uh, let's try one half i to the seventh. Well, okay, so we have a half. Now we know that i to the fourth gets us through, so i to the fifth is the same thing as i. i to the sixth is negative one, so i to the seventh is negative i. So this is just going to be negative one half i is what we have here. Okay, so keep that in mind. Kind of get those patterns. Use that little chart there. That's kind of helpful when you do those. Okay, the last thing, and kind of the most difficult part of 5.9 is kind of dealing with uh, rationalizing the denominator. We talked about that, that, you know, we're not supposed to ever have square roots in the denominator. Well, the same thing goes for complex numbers. We're not really supposed to have those in the denominator. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the complex conjugate we talked about. So if it's 5i in the denominator, we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by negative. 5i. We'll see what that accomplishes. Now you'll agree with me if we do this correctly. Negative um, 5i over negative 5i, that's actually 1. So when we multiply by 1, we don't change the value. All we're doing is changing what it looks like. So we say it's the same girl, but a different hairdo. All right, so we go to the top, we're going to get negative 15i, and then we're going to have negative 50i squared. Now on the bottom, 5i times negative 5i is negative 25i squared. 
Now there's some simplifying that can take place here. We'd have negative 15i. And so the negative 50i squared turns into positive 50. So I'm going to put that in front of that. There we go. And then negative 25i squared, that's actually positive 25. And we can reduce this. All of these numbers here are, are divisible by 5. So let's do that. Let's make this a 10 minus 3i over 5. And that's the most simplified version that we have there. Now you might look at it and say, it doesn't look like a whole lot more simplified than what we started with. But the fact that we don't have an imaginary number in the denominator is key, just like for radicals when we did those. Didn't want that. That's not simplified. OK, let's try one like this. Now this time we have a complex number that has both a real and an imaginary part. Well, the process is still the same. We're going to multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate, 4 plus 2i. 4 plus 2i. All right, so what do we get? Oh, this is a little more difficult because we got to foil it. So we're going to go 2 times 4, which is 8. 2 times 2i, which is 4i. Uh, 8i times 4, which is 32i. And then 8i times 2i, which is 16i squared. Oops, I put that up there. It'll get that dot. doesn't want to do a dot for me. There we go. All right, now on the bottom, now this is why we do the complex conjugate here, is that 4 times 4 is 16. Now what we're going to get here is we're going to get an 8i and a negative 8i. Those cancel each other out, and that's why we chose that. And then so when I go negative 2i times negative, positive 2i, we get a negative 4i squared. Okay, that's going to ensure that we get rid of that i out of there. Let's simplify the top. Now 16i squared here. That is, uh, that's negative 16. So what we're going to get up top is we're going to get a negative 8 plus 36i. And then this turns into a positive 4. It turns into 20. And what do we notice? To simplify, all those numbers are divisible by 4. So we're going to go negative 2 plus 9i all over 5 is what we're going to have for a final answer. All right. So there we go. That's about